guys so today i'm gonna show you how i work out at home because a lot of people have been asking for it we always find ourselves without access to the gym when we travel or when the gyms are shut or we're on holiday it's very normal but that's no excuse because you don't need a lot you don't even as i'll show in this video need a pull-up bar or a dip bar or anything like that you can just use your surrounding environment but what you do have to do is be a little bit creative think what is he doing with his body that allows him to train that body part? Once you start thinking like that, you can come up with creative and resourceful ways for yourself to train without depending on gyms, on equipment, on dumbbells. Of course, it's nice to have them, but we don't need it. You gotta remember that gyms probably came about like, I don't know, 200 years ago. It's a product of modern society. It's not before that people trained all the time with just their bodies with other things you can build a great body with just using not much just your body weight. we're going to start with the upper body and one of my favorite exercises to do at home for my upper body that works the whole chest your shoulders and your triceps is the body weight dips now as you can see even if you don't have dip bars even if you don't have any equipment all you need is two chairs and you can just use your body weight to start doing dips. Now, let's say you can do 12 reps with these. You can start wearing a bag with books in it and make the exercise harder. Remember what I said in my body weight training video. You don't want to start going to 15, 20, 30, 40 reps. That just works your endurance. OK, we want to stay in that sweet spot of 5 to 12 reps. And once you can do it with these, move on, make the exercise harder. I know right about now some of you are saying, you know, oh, I don't have um, chairs in my house or something like that. You know, everybody always has this random excuse. I don't have this. I don't have that. Look, OK, for you, I got you too. look at what I do in the kitchen just because there's a 90 degree angle on the kitchen counter. OK, you can do dips there as well remember a lot of home workouts it's about being creative and resourceful you you just have to awaken that part of your brain rather than the part of your brain that actually wants to relax and not train and make excuses and then you say oh you know i don't have that oh i'll just wait for my dumbbells oh i'll just wait for my resistance band oh i don't have a pull-up bar look the back exercises as i'll show you we're not even going to use a pull-up bar so you have no excuses which brings me on to the next point which is let's say you don't have a pull-up bar what do you do for your back and my favorite back exercise is the inverted row so let me show you that so first of all the way i set it up is i walk in with this random pole right this this random pole was in my house maybe you don't have random poles lying around the house but maybe uh you have like a wooden stick or something straight that won't break in between two chairs or something that is level and you basically pull your upper body your torso the bottom of your chest to the bar think about pulling with your elbows bring yourself in feel the contraction in your back and then release to the bottom position and repeat that is an inverted rope okay it's basically a horizontal movement if you think about it it's like a bent over row it's like a pen lay row that you can do with your body weight you, is it easy for you to do that all right let's move your feet up off the floor okay as your feet gets elevated and your body becomes more and more parallel to the ground the exercise becomes harder and harder you could even be at a decline where your feet is elevated higher than your head that would make the exercise even harder. You see how you can progressively make the exercise harder rather than just mindlessly increasing reps. This is one of the key principles of training at home and training with your body. Think about harder variations of the exercise once you can achieve 12 reps. Some of you right now, you're th saying, oh, uh, you know, I don't have a random pole in my house. I don't have a random stick in my house. I don't have two chairs that are the same height. You're coming up with all these random excuses why you can't do it, right? So look at what I did for you again. Boom. Okay, you can do this at a table. You can just literally Put yourself under a table and pull yourself to the table. Now, be careful. It's not a super light table that the table starts folding and falling on top of your head. You know, make sure that doesn't happen. But within this, the, the common sense safety regulations of your own house, you can get really, really creative. And I'm going to just prove it to you. I'm going to get to the next level on this, which is, you know, as I'm working out, my cat starts to take interest in what's going on. OK, as she does with everything, she just starts jumping on all the random things, starts going on her scratchboard and look at what you can do. Boom. 
you can start to be creative because you understand that when you're in a bent over position and you are pulling with your elbows behind your back, this will be a rowing movement that engages your biceps and your back. Okay, so you can do this obviously with heavy bags on both hands, or you could do one at a side if you don't have the same weight on each hand. Unilateral bag, book loaded bag row. Do you see? Push ups, perhaps the most famous body weight exercise of all time. Now, most people get stuck on just doing push ups. What you have to do when you do push ups is instead of doing hundreds of reps, 10, 20, 30 reps, you make the push up harder. I go into this in my body weight training video. If you've watched it, you know what I'm talking about. If you haven't, go see that because I really, really dig into the fundamentals of body weight training there. Again, when you do push ups, think about trying to build up to a one arm push up. You know, there's different variations that you can build up to. As I show here, you can, again, elevate your feet on a plank or something, and that's going to make your push-up harder. And it's going to basically make your push-up like an incline bench, which is very, very important to build that sexy upper chest. All right, so you can really build an amazing aesthetic body just at home doing simple exercises like this. What if you can't even do one push-up, okay? then there's different ways to build up to it. And I, I'm not gonna go into it in this video, probably in future videos I'll do one for people that can't even do one push up or one pull up. And there's actually concepts that you can use to build up to it. For instance, holds, holding certain positions, negatives, decentrics, you know? And you know, I'd love to get into it, but I'm not gonna do that now. If, you, if you're someone that's a complete beginner and you want to learn these things, you know, realize that the four exercises that I've shown you are major compound exercises. If you've been watching my channel, you know that a lot of the things that I talk about is compound movements, focusing on the fundamental, like really important exercises that give you 80% of the results. Those are the fundamental compound exercises. And in the home workout, it's the same. The same principles apply. Stay within the five to 12 rep range and make the exercise harder and focus on those four compound fundamental home exercises. Think creatively. This is, like I said, it's a switch in your brain. The moment you choose to think that way, you will find endless ways of training at home. That leads me on to the lower body where, you know, the, the variations are even more crazy. So let's get on to the lower body. Here I'm doing one of the warm-ups for the lower body, which is the backwards step-ups. Putting your knees above your toes and building strength from that position, stepping up backwards. This is something that I learned from one of my mentors, Ben Patrick, aka Knees Over Toes Guy, who's a pioneer in this field of knee help and in some ways, uh, athleticism and functionality as well. So this is a very good way for you to warm up and actually build up your knee health and prevent future knee injury. But as soon as I'm done with that warm up, I move straight into the Bulgarian split squat, which is the deadliest exercise. You can do this in the gym, you can do this at home. And if you, I recommend you start with this as your first main exercise, because otherwise you're gonna hate it. You're gonna hate it and you're gonna form a bad relationship with Bulgarian split squats and you'll never do it again, all right? And the first time you do Bulgarian split squats properly, the whole lower body is gonna be sore the next day for a week. And look, that's just part of, that's <laughs> just part of, part of training. It, it, you have to get over that the first week of absolute soreness. Bulgarian split squats are amazing for building your entire lower body, your glutes, your hamstrings, your core. And if you want an extra tip, the more your torso kind of tilts forward towards the ground, the more you engage your glutes for all the ladies. And then the more you kind of sit up straight as you go down, the more you engage the quads. Next exercise, another humongous important exercise is obviously the squat. Now, again, if you've seen, if you're an OG of this channel, um, and you, I say OG, but it's only like a, <laughs> a couple months ago, maybe when I posted my um, transformation video, I talk about one of the key principles of minimalist training, which is to focus on the hips, the hip flexes. Most people focus on the muscles that they can see, right? Look at my pecs, look at my arms. It's like, no. The most important muscles in your body are actually all in the back of your body, the posterior chain. Okay, I'm gonna get into that another time. But the, the muscle that you can't see, it's the hip flex and it's the most important muscle in your body. Just by far, it's the most important. Hip flexes and lower back. And the reason for that is that every functional movement everything starts and ends at the hips sitting down walking sitting running all the martial arts 
punching. If you've done martial arts in any serious way, you know exactly what I'm talking about, right? But it's not just martial arts, it's everything, even sex. Gaining flexibility in your hip flexors and building strength in hip extension, hip rotation, this translates to your posture as well. You're gonna develop really nice posture. It was one of the key things that helped me overcome my back pain. Another video that I need to get into because the worst thing that's happened in my life and, and overcoming that has been absolutely uh, crazy to, to, to even think about right now because I didn't think it was possible. So if you're interested in that kind of injury prevention and rehabilitation, you know obviously hit the subscribe button because i'll be getting into those but anyways get getting back to the point focus on your hips how do you do that you need to engage the hip flexor muscle and the best exercises to do that are usually unilateral lower body movements that's to say movement where you train one leg at a time even though unilateral movements are so important for your whole body right your upper body as well because it engages your obliques and your core for balance it's even more important in the lower body because it engages and stretches those hip flexors focus on unilateral movements when you do your lower body and one of my favorites is the pistol squat. It's very rare in real life that we jump with both feet or we move with both feet at the same time. When, when do you do that? Besides, you know, when you go to the toilet, you hardly ever move two feet at the same time. It's diagonal, it's lateral, it's, it's you know, it's one leg at a time. So we must mimic those functions. Of course you do that by training one leg at a time. And a pistol squat might be very hard for some people. So you can start with, you know, a goblet squat or just a bodyweight squat. Of course, you know, start with that. But then very quickly think about supporting yourself, both your hands for balance, and then slowly sitting down onto a chair. You know, that's much easier. And then standing up. If you can't stand up without the hand help, you know, use your hand. You see how you're again thinking about harder and harder ways, harder and harder variations of the exercise. And then there'll come a point where you can do it. And then you increase the range of motion. So you go without the chair, try without the chair, try to go lower and lower, lower and lower, lower and lower. Or you try to do the decentric. So you try to go down as low as possible, but you can't come up yet. So you're slowly, slowly building up until you can do a pistol squat. Okay. You can do eight pistol squats really easily. Maybe you start holding weight on each hand maybe if you're someone that's you know into athletics and stuff you want to start adding some dynamic movements and explosive movements or jumping with the pistol squad and balancing you know some of the some of the fun stuff that i show here as well and another super key exercise for your lower body is the Romanian deadlift, the single leg Romanian deadlift. And this is a variation that I learned from a football player uh, because I love football. And it's a, it's a very, very good exercise for stretching and working your hamstrings, but also working your, your balance, okay? So as you see me move like this, you know, you always have to balance on one foot and you feel that stretch in your hamstrings. As I said, it's really important to work the, the posterior part of your body and this is one of the great exercises to do that as well then of course we have the single leg hip thrust hip thrust focus on the hips right you can do this with both legs but i love to do it once you can do it with both legs it's a very good idea also again to build up to that single leg movement and really feel your glutes just tense at the top and then come down and then extend your hips again come down okay another very 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 important exercise so we have let's recap the four most important lower body exercises we have the bulgarian split squat the pistol squat the romanian deadlift single leg and the hip thrust so i've given you eight exercises with those eight you can build an amazing 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 am major major influence on me now and i feel terrible amazing body healthy functional injury free athletic aesthetic and capable and strong and lean well the lean depends on the on the diet and nutrition you know if you like my style you know check out my nutrition videos because a lot of people really like that too just focus on these eight now i know a lot of you as i always get questions you'll just be like you know what about the abs what about the arms so look i just threw in some abs and even some uh, arm stuff with resistance bands, but really these are just bonuses. You wanna focus on the core things, the core things, all right? And again, you know, the last thing that I will leave you with 
when it comes to home workouts is you just need to take from me some of those really really key concepts and then you can just creatively apply them in your own surrounding that's what we want right that's 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 true learning that's true application that's intelligence and you can do it so don't let the you know the gym dependence you know make your life miserable because exercise is one of the ways you you can really stay mentally healthy and happy you know whenever i was injured or unable to exercise slowly but surely i just feel bad like just internally after a long time you start to realize wow exercise is actually really linked to my mental well-being if you can only exercise in the gym then you're kind of becoming this gym dependent guy where you can only feel good if you go to the gym you don't want to be that guy and gyms are a product of modern society they were not around let's say 250 years ago probably i might be wrong in this but at least modern gyms with those like smith machines and stuff that must be a very recent development you don't need that you can train creatively and very very effectively and efficiently with nothing but your body and if you have a couple tools around you you're golden okay so i really hope that helped guys I try to go pretty deep but this is really the tip of the iceberg you know there's so much that needs to be covered so i'll be going into more of these topics in um in 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 future videos uh, and i'll probably be making guides and stuff for you guys so if you're into that you know hit the subscribe button and share this with other people that you know would benefit from it okay thank you so much as always for your support and um Cool. Bye-bye.